Okay, here's the final part, part C, um, for FRQ1 in the practice AP test. So again, this assumes that the previous two methods were constructed correctly and they work as specified. So even if you messed up part A and part B, you could theoretically get the code right for part C. Um, so in order to get full points for this question, you have to call row sums appropriately in order to receive full credit. If you tried to implement code that row sums should have done within this question, rather than calling row sums, you will actually get penalized for that. So this um, program not only tests your ability to um, create this method, but also to use existing methods that are already at your disposal. So let's take a look at what this problem is asking us to do. So this is the third method that we're going to create for this problem. And um, first they give you a little background information about what a diverse array is. So a 2D array is diverse if no two of its rows have, the, have entries that sum to the same value. So for example, looking at mat1, this is a diverse array because all the sums of each of the rows are distinct. But if a row, or sorry, if a 2D array has uh, two or more rows that uh, sum to the same number, then it is not diverse. So for example, mat2 here has row 0 and row 3 both uh, summing to 14. So this is not a diverse array. So what we want to do is we want to create a static method called isDiverse that returns a Boolean value, a true or false value. Um, and so basically um, it's going to return true if a 2D array is diverse and false if it is not diverse. Okay, so in this question they give you a method signature. So you are to create this method so that it takes in a 2D array of integers and it spits out a true or false true if this 2D array is diverse, false if it is not. Again, we have to use row sums appropriately in order to get full credit, which actually makes our job easier because we don't have to implement the code that row sums would have done otherwise. If you remember correctly, row sums will actually sum all the elements within a row of a 2D array. Row sums takes a 2D array. This makes our job much, much easier. Okay, so let's see what we um, should do first. All right, we know we want to return a true or a false, so we could specify a Boolean value or we could just return true or false. I'm not going to specify a Boolean variable. Um, rather, I'm just going to um, return true or false based on the result of a condition statement. What I do need, though, is I need to determine the sums of a given 2D array. So, for example, if mat2 are passed in, I will need to determine all the sums of these rows. But I have something that does that already. I have the row sum uh, method. So I can use that to my advantage. I'm going to go ahead and construct a 1D array. doesn't work. I'm going to create a 1D array. I guess I should make this visible. That holds integers. And I'm going to call this sums. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to initialize this as um, a default array that has default values of zeros, but I'm going to go ahead and assign this a return value that is determined by a method called to row sums. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to feed in this argument R2D to row sums. So what that's going to do is it's going to feed in R2 to row sums and it's going to determine in within a 1D array what all the sums of each of the row is. Because that's what it's supposed to do. Okay, and that's going to store that to that 1D um, int array. Okay, so if I kind of look at 
this example right here of the mat tube. What's gonna get spat out by um, this method call is a 1D array that looks like this, 14, 35, 36, and 14. Okay, just the sums of each of the row of mat two. That's what's going to get assigned to sums. Or rather, it'll refer to that array. All right, so once I've done that, I wanna go ahead and iterate through each of the elements of sum and determine if any one of these elements equals another element within this. And if it does, we want to return false, that this is not a diverse array. If none of the elements match each other, we want to return true, that hey, this is a diverse array. So let's see how we do that. We need a for loop. And I'm going to use a regular for loop this time. So I want to start at index is zero and I want to go up to the length of my 1d array sums so I want to say as long as index is less than sums dot length which again is a field not a method and I want to visit every element so I want to at each 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 iteration increment index by one don't forget your curly braces okay so each time I iterate through this, I want to go ahead and have a nested for loop here. And I want to start this off because I don't want to compare one element to itself, right? I don't want to compare element zero with element zero because then I'm always going to come up with false. It's not a diverse array because 14, or 14 and 14 are the same, but what I really want to find out is if 14 matches another element within this array. So for this for loop, I want to start off at a different index. I want to start off at the next possible index. So I'm going to do for int j is index plus 1. And I'm going to continue doing this until the length of sums again. So until the end of this array. So oops, j is less than sums.length. And again, I want to increment j by 1 each time. OK, now I want to make a comparison. Now I want to see if sums sub index is the same as sums sub j. So because what's being stored in sums are integers, I want to use my double equals comparison operator, not dot equals. So I want to compare sums sub index with sums sub j. If they are equal, we know that this is not a diverse array. So we want to return false. It's not diverse. Um, if we have exhausted both for loops, so the outer and the inner for loops, so we're going to close those out. This is the end of the inner, and this is the end of the outer. Once those two loops have been exhausted, only then can we say, yes, true, this is a diverse array. And then we'll close out the class as well. So let's go over this code and um, kind of explain what it's doing in the context of MAT2. Okay, so for MAT2, um, we feed in MAT2 and we wind up with sums being this 1D array right here. We've done that already. Okay, so next we want to iterate through sums. So we want to start at element zero, so that's 14. And um, what we want to do then is we want to compare it to each of the other elements in here. 
we do not want to compare it to itself because that's meaningless. We don't want to do that. So that's why we have this inner for loop that starts out at one more than the index of the one we start at. So we're going to compare 14 to 35, basically. So, uh, so um, index 1, that's where 35 is. So we're going to compare is 14, so sums sub 0, the same as sums sub 1, 35. No, it's not. So we are going to skip this return false, and we are going to go right back up here, and we're going to add 1 to index. So now we are comparing uh, sums sub, oh, sorry, we're <laughs> adding 1 to j right here. And we are now going to compare 14 to 36. Is 14 and 36 the same? No, it's not. So we're going to skip this part. We're going to go back up, add 1 to j. So now we're comparing sums sub 0 to sums sub 3. Is 14 the same as 14? Yes, it is. So we're going to return false and exit out of all of this. Now, had we not found a match uh, between any of these elements, we would have eventually um, exited out of the inner for loop and exited out of the outer for loop and then return true is diverse. Since it is not a diverse array, we wound up returning false, exactly what we should have done.